Welcome to another episode of Doggy Dilemmas. Today we're visiting Agway in Keene, New Hampshire to take a look at the various types of toys that will help solve your doggy dilemmas. We're going to see some good old fashioned chew toys and some brain toys. They're the specialty toy of today's topic. So let's go inside and take a look. Come on, Frankie. Hey, baby. Hey. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Yes, it is. Denise Mazzola is a certified professional dog trainer with over 20 years experience training dogs and people. If you've got a doggy dilemma, Denise can probably help. We love our dogs so much, they become an extension of our human family. And we forget that they're canines, they're predators. They have natural instincts to chase, grab, hold, shake, and dissect. A good toy can help fulfill your dog's natural instincts. Let's take a look at some. Here we have a good squeak toy, squeaker right in the middle. And dogs will love to dissect this, pull out the stuffing, tear it, shake it up. It will leave a mess in your house. If you don't want the mess, then try one of these toys. They also have a squeaker in it, which Frankie really likes but there's no stuffing. So it's a little bit neater and a little, so there's a little less pickup for you around the house. Rope toys are one of my favorites. Multiple dogs can pull on these toys and play tug all by themselves. But if you'd like to join in the fun, there's a great handle right here and you can, a good game of tug can help tire your dog out in no time at all. Some toys help solve the dissecting, chewing, shaking stage and other toys can do other things which would occupy your dog's brain a little bit more. Right here, we have Kongs and a variety of other Kong toys. What's nice about these toys is that they're very durable. Of course, there's the dog that will chew through them, but for most dogs, they will last a long time. And this, it's a hollow toy, so you can stuff this in a variety of ways, which we're going to show you later. And your dog will have to figure out how to get the food out of here. It's like doing math, and it tires them out. One of my favorites is the Tug-A-Jug. What's great about the tug -a jug is it's bulletproof plastic. You unscrew the bottom, you can put your dog's entire meal in here, put it back down, and the dog can go to town for hours trying to get all that food out. Ooh, Frankie likes this one. Okay, so now I want to just talk about this other twist and treat real quick. This is a great toy, it's called a twist and treat. And it's for what I call new learners, dogs that aren't used yet to solving puzzles. What's nice about it is that it, it unscrew, these two halves unscrew and it allows you to have some control over the difficulty of, the, of how difficult it is for the dog to get the food out of here. These are also great to toys, Everlasting Fire Plug. This, this plug up here is edible and they come in different flavors, chicken, beef, liver. So the dog will work and lick and chew it trying to get this out, as well as there's all kinds of other openings that you can stuff and put other toys, other food items or bully sticks in there. So it becomes a very interesting toy that your dog is receiving their meal or treats out of and they'll work at it for a long time to, to solve that puzzle. This is a great one. Something a little more simple is the bouncy bone. These are very hard plastic, safe for your dog to chew. They'll, they'll last for a long, long time. And then in the middle, there are these discs, which are edible. And the dogs will be able to chew on these and get them out. And they're replaceable. So when your dog eats one, you can grab another one. They're great. As you can see, there are a wide variety of brain toys. Each one provides your dog with a mental stimulation to help enrich their daily life and helps bring out those natural instincts in them. Let's take a look in the kitchen and see how you're actually gonna use these. And let's take a look at dogs actually eating out of them. It's a lot of fun. Come on, Frankie, let's go. All right, here we are in the kitchen with some brain toys so I can show you how to make them, fix them, make them interesting. The only limit you have is your imagination. And anybody that's watching that has children, children are the greatest at making brain toys very, very interesting. So let's start with one of my favorites. This is the twist and treat. Remember we saw it in the store and it screws together. What I like about this is when you have a new learner who, who's a dog that has never had a brain toy before, think of brain toys as puzzles. 
I'm not a puzzle person. If I sit down at a 500 piece puzzle, I'm not gonna do it, it's too difficult. I need a 100 piece puzzle. So this is the 100 piece puzzle for your dog. Make it nice and easy for them. So let me go to the freezer because I've prepared some already for us. All right, so what I have here is this half of the brain toy has some meat baby food and I've added the dog's regular dog food on top of that. This half has cream cheese, just to show you something different that you can put in there. It's been frozen, so all these treats that I've left hanging out will now, will now stay in place. And what's nice is you can just put these together as they are. So this one would be pretty easy because I'm going to leave it about that open. I can squeeze it down a little bit more, but I'll break off some of those, some of those treats. So your dog will, will get the instant gratification of these treats that they can eat right away. And then they're going to have to lick and chew. And you can see this one's been well used already to get the rest of the food out of there. So what they're doing is they're exercising their mind, their brain, which is why I call them brain toys, to help figure out how to get the food out of there. Now if you want to, before you put these together, you can always add I'll make it even more different. You can always add right on top here another layer of whatever you want. Peanut butter, cream, cheese, makes no difference. Whatever is agreeable to your dog's digestive system. And then again, put it together and watch them go to town and, and have a great time trying to figure that out. All right. One of the other ones we talked about in the store is called a Kong. And a Kong, the color Kong tells you how tough the plastic is. The black is the most durable and hardy, and yes, there are some Labradors and Rottweilers that'll still get through that, but you know what? It's better that your dog eat your Kong instead of your leather shoes. And here's one that we've had cut in half so that you can actually see the inside of the Kong. And what your goal is when you're stuffing this, peanut butter is one of my favorites, is that you're just slathering it in here, and then you're adding whatever you want, kibble, some biscuits. So now the dog has to figure out how to get the food out of here. And if you use peanut butter and a lot of kibble like that, it's very easy. The dog will be able to, here's one that's already stuffed. So this one is stuffed. There's peanut butter at this end. I've got peanut butter and some treats in this end. It's not frozen. It'll be very easy for the dog to figure out how to get the food out of here. Now, if you have what I call an advanced learner, if you have some a dog that is good with Kongs, they can figure them out, they'll work at them for a long time, it's ready for, you're ready for the next step, which would be to freeze this, and I would freeze it leaving a treat or something sticking right out of the end. Always remember, instant gratification is a good thing. Use your empty oatmeal container, use a shoe box, any kind of box. You're gonna put that Kong right in there, put the top back on, if they're really good, you can tape it a little bit, and you're gonna give your dog this as the brain toy. Remember we talked about their natural instincts to dissect and shred and tear apart? They're gonna to go to town tearing apart this cardboard box, then they're gonna get the Kong, and then they're gonna eat all that stuff. So they will really, their natural instincts will be very satisfied with a toy like this, okay? And these are things you can find every day around your house, hopefully. Let's talk about bones. So, a nice big dog bone is a perfectly good chew toy and it acts as a brain toy for your dog. And what I like about them is you can use them over and over again. So here's one fresh from uh, Hannaford's Grocer. Now my dogs have had these for years, so I could just hand this down to Thor and he would eat this and not, not have any stomach upset whatsoever. But if you're new to brain toys and if your dog is new to bones, you don't want to start with this step. What you want to do first is is boil the bone for about 45 minutes, which will loosen up everything inside the bone. And then what I've done is I've cleaned out most of the marrow from here, and I've actually cut off most of the um, meat and fat from the outside of the bone. So your dog will still have a very enjoyable treat with this, but they won't have all the stomach upset. So you have to build up their digestive system so that they will be able to handle some of these um, higher, sort of richer products, okay? Then the end product from these bones looks like this. And this is what I call a fairly naked bone. These are all bones 
that my dogs have had probably for years and they they always go back and will reach you on them and I can restuff them. So I can just take this bone, I can add peanut butter just because it's easiest, some treats, and I can even get fancy and I could always put in a, a, a bully stick or something else in there. So again, you're only limited by your imagination, but this becomes a recyclable toy that you can use over and over again. Okay, and my dogs just love these things. So those are something cheap. Um, it's best to move through the boiling stage so that they can have the raw bones because the raw bone is much stronger than the cooked bone. None of these toys should be left with your dogs unattended until you're sure about how they're going to do with them. Okay, so they always, you, always, you always need to supervise them when you're starting a new toy. All right, let's take a look at the Everlasting Treat Ball, another one of my favorites. And the Everlasting Treat Ball, now I've been soaking this for just a few minutes. So this now becomes a little wet and moist and it's, it's the equivalent of soft serve ice cream for your dog. And it's edible, this is a chicken one. And then instead of, you can put a plug, another edible plug in this, but what I like to do again, is I'm gonna add some treats, just push them in there. Some little biscuits. And then I'm going to leave one sort of medium-sized biscuits out so, again, the dog can have that instant gratification and go to town on this, okay? So these are replaceable. Um, if, you don't, if you've run out of the plugs, you can always just stuff this toy again. So there's many uses for these toys, not just the one, and you'll get a lot of, a lot of use out of them. Now, this is something that's very simple, and I have a bigger one. But, the other thing to remember is most of these toys come in multiple sizes. So if you have, like I have a yellow lab and a Boston Terrier, so all of my toys are lab size toys because I don't want my lab to have something too small that might be a swallowing hazard. So if you have multiple size dogs in your house, you're going to have to get the toy for the larger dog unless you're going to separate them all the time. So here's um, the stuff a ball. Very simple, very easy. I like this one if I'm working at my computer, if I'm on the phone and the dogs need to be busy and not bothering me, I will just, you just add some treats right in here. As it rolls around, the treats will start to come out and the dog will eat them. There's also, it has these grooves on the outside and you can use um, a squeezed cheese that you can get at the grocery store or you can use a pre-made um, product called Kong Stuffing and you can just put this right in here this way. Again, instant gratification is great for the dog. They'll be able to lick that and get that off right away, and then they'll start to work on the food that's inside. Okay. Now, you know, we all, in everyday products, there's lots of great things that you can use as brain toys, and you don't have to spend a lot of money. So empty soda containers. This one, just a water bottle. I've taken the plastic top out. It shakes. Dogs love that. And they'll crunch it, and they'll toss it around until the food comes out. When it's all destroyed, it goes in your recycling bin. These should not be, you should not leave your dog alone with these in case they start to chew them and pull them apart. You don't want them to eat that plastic. You can use a bigger bottle, and on this bottle, I've actually cut some additional holes here on the sides. So again, if your dog wa were a new learner, they're, they're not experienced with brain toys whatsoever, you would add some additional holes. I've got two size treats in there, and this is the toy as well, so that, again, they're going to crunch it, and as they move it around, the food's going to come out of these holes and out of the top, and, and they're going to eat. Dogs being predatory animals, and any, if you think about any animal in the wild, they're, they spend their entire existence looking for food, and so many times we do an injustice to our dogs by just setting down a bowl of food. So my yellow lab will eat that in 15 seconds, and then what is he, what is he left to do for the rest of the day? Well, he's going to chew my shoes or bark out the window. Dogs are going to find something to do and entertain themselves. So if we can provide them with some brain stimulation through some of these toys, through some of the dissecting toys we saw at Agway, all the better. Our dogs' lives will be enriched. We're going to fulfill those natural instincts to shred and dissect and chew and, and solve some problems. Um, and everybody will live a little bit happier. They'll be calmer and tired, and you'll have a well-behaved dog. This is just, uh, this could be a ball that you throw around, but anything that has any kind of opening and containment system, you can use as a brain toy. So I've just added, um, I've added these 
wellness, just these big treats in there. And I think a little bit bigger treat would be a little bit better for this toy so that it, they won't come out quite so easily. So again, these will come out right away, instant gratification, but then there's a little something left in there that they're gonna have to work on even, even more. I've got one more in the freezer I wanna show you. It's one of the naked bones that's already been chewed. And I stuffed it last night with peanut butter, some biscuits, and a bully stick. So my dogs can hardly wait to get their mouths on some of these things and start showing you how, how they're going to work. So why don't we do that? We'll take a break, and we'll go and see dogs actually using the brain toys. OK, so here I am with two of my friends. And we have a different brain toy. This is a Nina Ottoman toy. She's from Sweden. And what happens here is the dogs have to figure out how to get the food that's been, that I've put under these little white bones. So they're going to use, she's going to use her nose and her paws. So she's flipped that one over and she's, and when she removes the white bone, then she can slide the other brown pieces back and forth, again, either her nose or her paws, until she gets the food out. Oh, there she goes. She gets the other one down. So for a small dog, I could feed Vesta. She gets about a quarter a cup of food in the morning, and I could disperse the, her quarter cup of food under all these little pieces, and this could be how she is fed in the morning or in the evening. So I'm off getting ready for work, and she's out here solving a puzzle. Her, she's being enriched. She is using her natural instincts, being a terrier of sniffing out the prey or the food, and then trying to figure out how to get it out, which is not unlike what she would be doing um, looking for rats or mice or other little vermin. So she's gotten pretty good at this. <laughs> so here's the twist and treat that I showed you earlier with all the frozen food in it. Thor is very good at solving brain toys, so I'm going to crank this down just a little bit more, or it'll be way too easy for him. Okay, so let's see if she's figured out all of these. Oop, she's got one more left. She's getting closer. Oop, there. So this is a great little toy. Any brain toy you can feed out of. And even though I was using peanut butter and cream cheese, you could also use your dog's canned food. Oh, I need a little thingy for that one. Oh. Okay, so this toy is called Dog Spinny. Same woman designed it from Sweden. <laughs> and this one has all these little bone-shaped holes, and as she slides this around, she's going to find all the other treats that are hidden in there. So I'll start her off. So this one's she's using more of her no nose to spin it around and then to get the food that's in there out. <laughs> it's just trying to we'll just slide it around the carpet. So this is Vesta's first time having this pink toy. She's not had this one before. So you can see she's moving it around on the carpet to see if that makes the food come out. By nature of doing that, the little thing spins around, and then she finds some more food in there. So that'll keep her busy for a little while as well. You could use a combination of toys to feed your dogs with as, if you needed to, if they're a, if they're a bigger dog. So both of these dogs are experienced learners with brain toys. So this one is a pyramid. It has one hole, and it, it, it's like a weeble. It's going to wobble around, and she's going to knock the food out of that one. There she goes. So she uses her paws 
knocks it over. She can't pick up these big toys in her mouth. And this, this pyramid toy just has her regular breakfast food right in there. So that's how she's going to get her meal today. All right, we're going to switch with Vesta. She's done a great job getting some of the food out of this one. And we're going to give her now just one of these other ones we did, which is just a soda bottle with some food in it. See how she likes that one. Now, Vesta's mouth is a little bit smaller than the lab, and so she may have a difficult time with that, but we'll see. You don't want this one? So one little swipe, she got about three or four pieces of dog food out. There we go. And I filled it. The, the, the more full it is, the easier it is for the food to come out. It'll get a slightly more difficult as the food comes out all on its own. And the little puppy biscuits I put in there as well will take a little bit longer before they'll even come out of that. This one is the is the is the tug a jug. It's it's a the dogs have already used it. So this uh, plastic piece is broken out, but I'm going to leave it in there so you can see what happens. And Thor usually has an interesting way of solving this puzzle. So he picks it up, <laughs> and he's going to he's just going to literally start dumping that out. Now Thor is ten. And he has had brain toys since he was eight weeks old. So he wastes no time in solving the puzzle at all. Other dogs would have to hit and bang this thing around quite a bit. And he just uses his mouth to shake the, the food out of the end of it. <laughs> so again, you could put your dog's entire meal in that tug-a-jug. And there is a bigger size that I would actually use for Thor. This is sort of the medium size um, toy. But he could, have his, he could have his breakfast and his dinner right out of there. Save that one for Frankie. Yeah, we can do the bone.
This is the recycled uh, bone that I showed you earlier. Sit down. That I've frozen. There's peanut butter, there's dog treats, and there's a bully stick in there. So we'll let him have that. Okay, this is the everlasting treat ball we talked about earlier. And it's been soaking. So I'm going to let Vesta take a look at that. So she's rolled it over and she's going to pull the biscuit if she can. By using different brain toys that I'm showing you today, your dogs won't be bored. You don't always want to use the same toy. You don't want to use the same Kong or, the, or always the everlasting treat ball. You should have four or five different brain toys that you can use throughout the week or different days. I use them a lot during the holidays when there's people coming over so that uh, the dogs can have something fun to do. They'll be exercising their brain and we can have an enjoyable meal without too much um, concern about the dogs. <laughs> so Vesta's interested in trying to get the little treats that are out of there. She's not, too, she's not quite yet figured out that she can eat this, although she's had them before. Here it is. Now, I know these two dogs, they're my dogs, so I know that I can also give them brain toys together, and I'm not going to create a dog fight. But if you're unsure about multiple dogs, or if you have a multiple dog household, and you're unsure about how they will behave with each other, you should always separate your dogs when you, before you give them a high-value item such as these. On today's episode of Doggy Dilemmas, we talked about a variety of brain toys and how they can help solve your doggy dilemmas. If your dog is driving you crazy, has a lot of extra energy, take some time, fill some brain toys, freeze them if they're ready, and you can have a nice quiet meal, dinner, movie with your friends while your dogs are working on brain toys. Thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you next week. If you have a doggy dilemma, Denise can help. Visit www.denisemazzola.com for more information. Denise Mazzola is a certified professional dog trainer tested through the Association of Pet Dog Trainers. The association requires recertification every three years with a minimum of 30 hours of continuing education. She has been training dogs and working with families for over 20 years. <laughs>